So today we are going to, to talk about identity resolution and more broadly entity resolution. Uh, so just to sum up, but I, I see you already, William, so you're already a customer, so I don't to spend uh, too much time. But just to be aware that we had a couple of new pieces in our uh, overall architecture now, since we released recently the transformer for Snowflake. Not sure if you are dealing with Snowflake so far, but so beyond the, our data collector and transformer for Spark, we, we, we have now uh, a transformer for Snowflake, which is very important for us. It's part of our, our overall strategy where we invest heavily. So it's compatible with the Snowpark framework. So we can easily now do quite similar thing compared to the transformer for Snow, uh, Spark. And, and in addition, we can bring some new UDF on the flight. So, but let's uh, focus now on the main topic of the today's presentation. So, why we are talking about entity resolution? Because since we stream set, we, we are helping our customer, you know, moving their data from multi heterogeneous sources to their data lake, the, the landing area, the landing stage. And then after that, we will enable them to perform advanced transformation with a low-code approach. And we help them to automate uh, uh, and apply the DevOps principle to this new modern way to address data integrations. Uh, there is some cases for which uh, we are not able to aggregate consistently or maintain some customer dimension or any kind of dimensions if we are not able to link those source in a relational manner. So it's typically, uh, that's where the entity re the re resolutions come with a modern approach. So we, we can basically address some multiple use cases in different vertical. So I use it a lot in the past in the in financial services, so in, in especially in insurance for which, uh, for serving fraud detection typically but also for in, in public organizations where each time we need to index uh, blacklist, for example, for screening. So we need, we need, for, we need some un, entity resolutions for that, for indexing properly and, and finding some non-obvious relationship across different heterogeneous sources. We can also use it for, you know, delta quality, purposes, especially after merge and acquisitions. So we, we need to quickly, depending on the maturity level of our customer, but we can, the next step is most of the time is to bring a master data management uh, to, to solve these uh, deduplications and improve the data quality over time. And, and the, the, the identity resolution there is, is key. And, <laughs> but we can also use it simply for enrichment purposes. Just think about, for example, the donut breast rate. Open, and now there's a huge amount of open data that can be used. So it's, uh, it's in interesting to, to be able to enrich based on corporate data. For example, you, you can combine those rows and with, um, identity resolution capabilities, uh, you, you will solve and save a lot of times uh, to, to, to improve and to enrich this, uh, this data set. Uh, and you can also use it for, you know, product deduplication, organization, individual, or household as well. And I will give you an example later on during this, uh, this demo. And so why I selected Zing? Because Zing is very, bring a new modern way to, to handle this uh, entity resolutions capabilities. Because it's powered by machine learning techniques. And if you're already familiar with the duplications, in the past, uh, we used some match codes techniques for blocking criteria, but it was 
good for classical legacy data warehouse uh, 20 years ago. But since now we are dealing with big data, it is no more relevant. Since we understand that the key point before applying some algorithmic and to be and find similarity, we need to, to, to regroup some pair that can potentially be duplicate. And this is very time consuming process. Just to give you an example is you will perform behind the scene n square minute n, minutes n divided by two comparisons. So for 10,000 records, you will perform more than almost 50 million of comparisons. So to avoid this, uh, Zing applies some clustering techniques uh, for you know, shorten and uh, narrow down the, the number of pair uh, that need to be compared. And once you, you already indexed and, and, and applied this clustering, Zing apply a similarity ML model to, to, <coughs> to figure out, to identify what you expect to identify. So it's, it's on household, or for example, or organizations, the duplications, you, you, you will apply different strategy, but behind the scene, under the cover, it's a classification model. So it's enable you to handle some different variations on the name itself, on the address of telephones. So that means you don't have to, in terms of prerequisites, you don't have to spend too much time to, like we did in, in the old technique, we, we spend a lot of time to, to standardize, normalize the data set before going the, to the machines. And sometimes it helps with some data as long as it's not big data, but it's, you can skew the, and you can impact the data quality if you do not it correctly. So that's where the machine learnings associated with things uh, solve this, uh, this issue. So it, you can apply the similarity models to allow some variations of nicknames, some, you know, some noise like salutations, some abbreviations, you know, and <coughs> it, it, will, uh, it will handle as long as you can train it, this model, to make it more accurate over time. So this is one to discover the, the goal of this uh, topic today. And we work through the uh, demo after that. Uh, and for this demo, I, I combine different stack of technology. So obviously, I use Zing. Zing is a ML model for solving so entity resolutions that rely on Spark. So it's a good news because we already have a transformer for Spark. So I embed their library. And since we need, so I use Databricks as a Spark cluster uh, from, so I just need to industrialize and automate the entire workflow in, in uh, the transform. And for, in terms of desti uh, destination, I use Snowflake to feed the result and the different staging that is needed as part of the overall workflow. But by the way, I could, in some cases, also have used our transformer for Snowflake. So, especially between the staging area and the gold and the final stage of the, the duplication set. So, in between, we can apply the, some ETL slash ELT capability also. So, now let's drill into the, the different steps that are that come and that we have to go through with the Zing uh, process. So, first of all, we need to identify what kind of data set we need to train this model. This is the first part. So we have to spend some time. Uh, the, in terms of best practice and the reality, we need to, to, to identify some data set, some sample from real data set. So in my case, for demo purpose, I use another approach. I use a data collector to generate some fake data set, but in the real life, we strongly, I strongly recommend to use real data sets and adding some fake duplicates in it in order to train and to make the training, the, the training model more 
efficient and our model more accurate. Okay. And so for, for that, and it is not a one shot. So when we once you have identified, build your data set, so you, then we will see how we can train in uh, and iterate to, to run uh, because this original data set can be a sample, but it can, and based on that, Zing can also identify a subset of this sample to, to, and to ask a human person to review and say, okay, and train the model. Is it a math or not? We will see that over time. The third step now, once you're happy and with the, and you think your model is accurate enough, then you can then start either the matching phase or the link phase. So for deduplication, uh, one or many sources, then you can use a match phase as long as you are union all the differences within the same pipeline. And after that, you if you need some enrichment, one source to another, and and then it will be the link phase. After that, we so in my the demo in this demo we only use the duplication from one particular sources, and after that we will go to the step number four to consolidate to create a golden record if you will okay, and to initialize our customer dimension in Snowflake. And the last and not least is the, five, is the step five, is how I can now maintain this customer dimension over time when there is some new customer data set that's coming. So in other words, how I can go through the incremental phase for and perform identity resolution on the fly. So in this particular from the step three up to the step five, we are combining all the stack of technology, transformers, Zing, Databricks, and Snowflake. Give you an example of what I did. So for the, this is a data collector, so just to generate fake data sets. And after that, I've, I had it for some of the records, some fake voluntary. So what I want behind that is to train the model to make it accurate enough that it can solve the real duplicate later on. So, and taking into account the common mistake we can do in terms of, you know, we can bring some nicknames, some initials, some abbreviations, some, you know, prefix <coughs> on the family name, for example. If I do not have some time to clean, to, to perform some cleansing on the telephone, we can have some, you know, some noise in it, some, some prefix, international prefix or brackets and so on. The date of birth can be in different format. Or well, in that case, I use the same, but, but voila. And we can also have some different mistake on the address stuff. So once the data set is done, you need to train the model. So Zing expect you provide somehow a specification on uh, files, which is a JSON base. So you have to provide a JSON that will describe what you expect. So typically, are you expect Zing used for the similarity model, typically uh, the names as a fuzzy matching or not it's a standard uh, or do you want the, the the name be part of the overall strategy and influence the way zing will identify and tell you whether it's match or not typically i give you an example if you are looking for a result the duplications then the, the weight you you will assign to the family names it will be very less compared to the other one to the address stuff, for example. So you can specify either it's a, you, you want to use it or not, and whether it's a, a fuzzy match or not. And so you can specify a set of fields for and and in, in that in that way. And at the end, 
you use specifies the number of partitions, it will create a unique ID for the model ID. <clears throat> and and, you, and, and, get, and also the, the percentage of the labeling uh, step, I will come, come, I will come uh, again on this part because it will create, when we train this model, we have a oh, job change. as well that will identify some sample. It will tell you, and you can specify how many the percentage of the real data set you provide for, from which Zing will identify some pair. So to do that, to identify the pairs when it's done, so you have to run this first step, which is a Spark to meet job in Databricks. Specify what is the JSON, so the, the, the specification of your models in, in a DBFS, in my case, because I'm using Databricks. And the phase. So the phase is, the first step is the fine training data because we need to train the data. So it will, will base and pick up <coughs> five, uh, in my case, I use 50% of the sample I used already. And it will and you ask a human person to, to, to decide this, if this particular pair of record is a match or not. When we do that, we go through the next step. So we need to make this process as scalable as possible. So we need to sense to, to, to swim set. We can this with multiple sources using some ETL transformation like union. So if in that case, I, I just use one find, but I could have used plenty of other sources. I use some partitionings. If you are quant confident enough on the fields, because you already check the data quality before then we can use some of those fields or part of those fields as a blocking criteria and then you can use some partition to improve the performance and which well this part is optional for this demo but and then i could uh, and implement the, the scala part so I, I just in that case use one data frame and load the the result in a staging table in my snowflake account so this is an example of what kind of output it provides. So it provides a, a mean score, mat score, and, and most importantly, the cluster ID, which regroup all the potential duplicate at this stage. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is another strategy I use for Hosol, for example. So, it's a, so we can create multiple models ID based on different strategies using the same data set. This is what I use for, and this is what we are going to see during this demo. And once you have identified potential duplicate, by year you have to decide how to consolidate those duplicate. So in another word, we can once again either use a transformer for Spark. If, if you, you need to load the result in a, in Snowflake or any kind of other data lake or data, data warehouse. And if it's uh, Snowflake only, you can use the transformer for Snowflake then because it's come with the same kind of transformations. So you will just need the deduplicate there. You can combine, combine as, as well the sort and the aggregate to do similar things, but the duplicate will uh, help you improve the productivity of your development. Is straightforward. And once you have deduplicated, then you have to maintain some cross reference because you have to think about the incremental phase again, what's going on, what you will ingest some new data again. So you have to maintain some cross reference and to maintain the cluster ID with your source ID. And you can apply some surrogate key, if you will, before initialize the customer dimension in your case. So since I'm, so I added a couple of new fields, such as the versions, whether it's the active flags to specify if it's the, the current active dimension, and the start and end timestamp. So once we have initialized our customer dimensions in our destination, 
Then now we have to go through the last step, which is how we can deal with some new sources. And, and uh, so we have different cases for, for this. So we have to check first if the new record that's coming is already known as part of my cross reference. If yes, just I just need to keep the previous cluster ID and attach to them. <laughs> and just go through the slowly changing dimension type two to let stream set <clears throat> updated the version accordingly before loading the result in my master uh, customer dimension. So I read the same source and I load and update it and merge it to the same table. Otherwise, if I cannot find it in my cross ref, then this is where the added value of zinc uh, against is coming. So that bit, I will try to match this new record. Since I was not able to match it with my cross ref, so that I will try to match it using some identity resolution techniques. So I, I read it from the same master again and try to, if there is a match, then I consolidate, I create a golden record. So the strategy I, I retain for this use case and for demo purpose, I just wanted to update only if there is a change on the telephone or the address staff. So I keep, even there is some variation on the name and some mistake on the date of birth or different format, I will keep the original one for the date of birth and the name, but I just only update then uh, the telephone or the address. This is kind of sense. Then I use a union transformation to, to gather all the different records coming from different stream. And I use some left out origins just in case that, because I need to also to, to find that the record that has not been neither found in my cross ref and nor as a potential match from my zine stuff. So that it will, at the end, it will create a new version, a brand new version for one particular new record then. So if we assign that to some data, it's more, easy to understand now with some real data set. So if I just pick up three different records, I voluntarily had the first one. So this, the first one is key track. This one, I already know that is part of my cross ref. It's one of the use case for which, so what I expect at this stage is we stream set will catch it and will catch and assign the cluster ID. Later on. The second use case is the raw lorry uh, curluc is not has not been found in my um, my cross ref, but it can be is already something that Zing can catch later on after having applied some identity resolutions because it's re it's referenced by another ID. And is there is some mistake on the on the on the on the name? It, I think I put on the second, wrong uh, number. So the lorry Kerluk is actually on the. Uh, <laughs> let me change that. It's right here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's better now, like this. And the third. The, this one is uh, Jean-Marc Le Guignac, myself, is neither found in my cross ref and nor in my, uh, in my original data set because it's a, basically it's a new individual that is not part of my existing customer dimension. So let's jump now to the, the, the demo itself. So if you want to, to have a look on the Zing and, and get started with Zing, you, you, there is a, an online doc which is very helpful. So you go straight to the docs.zing.ai and there is a you know step-by-step -step guide. And I recommend you uh, 
goes through the Docker. So you can pull basically the Docker image uh, <clears throat> and you can, and they provide some existing models. You can play on some data set as well. So you can get familiar all the different steps I already described to you before, and uh, you will, it's very, very well documented. So in terms of pipelines, so the first one I, I used, uh, it was that one, just to generate. So you can, uh, if you don't, if you want for training purpose and you want to, you can run this, uh, these pipelines. I just re re did a preview, but uh, so you can just specify what you need in terms of uh, matching criteria, okay, and some ID. Uh, so I you just use a field type converter for the date, but you can you have a range of field you can use, and uh, especially if you rather prefer uh, dealing with some organization names, so you, you have a lot of other things. So you can use business credit card as well. <coughs> and you, you can you have a, a yeah plenty uh, of other attributes you can use as part of it. And once you, once it's done, you you can create your own uh, data set updated. So the most important, uh, so in my case, when you go through the second step is to, to, to deal with, um, I'll give you an example for this, this one. So this one, the six, I think I remember is I use it for, um, so for the name, yeah. So this one is for uh, individual, I think, yeah. So you specify, what are the fields where for which and which kind of uh, match types you want so i use fuzzy for each of those and what is the model id uh, it, it will use behind the scenes so once it's done that means you you can go back to your um oops, sorry uh, no. No. you can go back to data bridge then and run this uh, Spark Subic job. So it will use this, uh, these config files. And when it's done, you can bring this. So it will, uh, you can run this uh, notebook in Python, in Databricks. And if I show you the codes, it, it just, you just need to, to specify what is the model ID you are dealing with, okay? And after that, oh, sorry, I want to carry out the code here and show the result. And it's pop up some pairs, and you need to specify where is it, is it a match or not, or you are not sure. So, respectively, so zero is not a match. Once you are happy with that, and two, you are uncertain, not sure. Okay. So, and after that, you need to iterate. So this one looks quite similar. So let's say, let's keep to, to, to that one and you can keep going and, and, and run it again. It will find some other comparison. Fred Champlins, yes, okay. So this one is with some same data bus, different format, but this looks the same. So let's say I keep one because I st I'm still happy with that. Cole is still the same. So you, you continue to train like that until uh, you reach uh, uh, 40 records. So I already trained before, so that's why uh, I only have two proposals, but uh, you can iterate and run again this smart subject and that identifies some new sample again. So you, you would bring you behind the scenes some new pairs and, and you come back, you iterate until you find some relevant propositions. And when it's done, then you, you go through the, the different uh, other pipelines. This is a way for individual, for example. Ah, it's, it's done. Uh, sorry. Session is dead. So you have to either use the individual of the household. And so in I use uh, in terms of repartitions, I use the address city in that case only. Uh, or you can 
make a substring of, uh, I don't know, the zip code or whatever you want, if you need. That is optional, huh? once again. And this is uh, the Scala code. So I have exactly the same uh, strategy that I use during the fine training data phase. So in the JSON document. And I specify at the end the, 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 what is the data frames that's coming. So in our case, I, and I, the phase is slightly different now. I trend match, I use a trend match instead of the fine training data set. I, I could have selected the train, uh, the, the link phase if I wanted to compare customer data set against an external data set. Okay. This is one that I'm using later on, by the way. And that's it. And at the end, you have uh, it's bring some uh, in your destination. So it will bring some uh, for the individual, for example, it will bring some, uh, some duplicates and with a cluster on the side. So it, this is a way to work. So you can, as you can see, it's a uh, you, if, if, even if you have some variation on your first name or just use initials, nicknames, he find it for you. Uh, regardless, so you can also have some different, you know, uh, phonetical interpretation of your first name or it, it, it works again. And same for the, the household. So obviously the also is since I, I specified not use the names in that case, so I have more permissive uh, uh, first names in that case. So we can, but we can apply some you know analytics behind that more easily, and you can uh, you can plug a data quality dashboard if needed. So to uh, to have a, a KPI or more holistic view or what you want to achieve. But let's go, what, so once the deduplication is done, so let's come back to our the list of pipelines. So you, you go through the consolidation step, which is now uh, the, the, this ones. And what I'm using behind the scene, I just specify the, the deduplication. So what is the field to evaluate? So I want to apply some consolidated record based on the cluster. Right, and my case is sorted by, and, and I skim to take the first. I could have, if I want to, have a more tune in the way I want to consider it field by field. Typically, I would have selected then the maybe the aggregator combined with the sort. And after that, I use some left outer gen to keep track of the original records, uh, and you know. And also, so uh, I didn't remember what I did. Yes, and perform some enrichment. And uh, yeah, and to specify whether it's a master files when I update my, uh, I don't know, my cross ref or, you know, this is a way, we, and I then I update also my, um, my customer dimensions. So, so this is the initial phase. So when we complete this in, in initial phase, then we can go uh, to the to this uh, uh, real flow with for the, dealing with the incremental phase. So what I'm using from here, so I have uh, put the three different records in it. So I I put the x the xio is already part of my. Uh, Master, so I know that in my master, uh, in my crossref, sorry, I will find some, some things. So if I, in my stream selector, then I, I find this XO. So it will go to the stream number one, right here. And I just renamed the, the field to be unique, but I could have selected the, yeah, the, the surrogate key then. I put it in a case because my, all my field name in my Snowflake destination remain in, in upper case, and that's it. Once, and for those who are not match, which is my second record. So 
So my second record is uh, Laurie Curley. So Laurie Curley has been matched normally with my original data set, but not using the, the cross-ref lookup, but using the Zing uh, link phase in our case. So Laurie Curley, as you can see, get has been matched, been assigned to the same cluster, the same cluster ID. We've got the score, and even there is some variation, some mistake on the first name. This has been mistyped. It. Uh, <coughs> I also have a brand new telephone number. This is what I'm interested in. So maybe this is the one I and I will just update it in my destinations. And to, to do that, so I just specify how I want, I, I want to start. So I just sort by cluster ID ascending and the source descending. So I can weight it the way I want to consolidate based on the where the data comes from. And so I specify what I want to keep from which source typically. So I want to keep, even if there is some variation in the name, I want to keep the ones that I already have as part of my custom, existing customer dimension record. But I only change for my phone. In the phone, I will take the last record among each cluster. And same for the address. And then I union everything, go to, and, and the, the most clever uh, uh, works is handled by my uh, slowly changing dimensions. Mm -hmm. So it's in that case, it will solve the complexity in one shot. So since the first records, the XO records uh, was known, so it create a brand new version. So now I switch to the number version number two, and he update the hand timestamp date accordingly. Uh, no where is my, just, it's not sorted. Where is, is it, it's not the second one. It's the third, you know. The third. Yeah, no, it's that, it's that one, Lori. Yeah, so this is the first version, so he update the end timestamp. So Lori Curl with that one. Switch to the version number two. This one is the third use case I use. So this one is the version one because it's a brand new records. That's it. Yeah. So now we recover all the, the main step of uh, what, I, what I wanted to show you today. So do, do you have any questions? So William, see, is it something you, do you have some similar use case? Um, no. No? No, uh, not yet. Uh, our data is uh, hard linked across uh, different oh. entities. We don't, we don't have the, the uh, fuzzy. Um, for now, yeah. No, but I could see I could see a space for this um, in the future, uh, depending on which way the business goes in the next uh, twelve months. You are not buying external data sets, right? Typically, or you are not dealing with some partner data sets uh, to. Uh, no, not actually. So. There, there is one use case, but it's a t it's it's small. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would be because we do get data from we do have one external data source that we have to normalize, and <clears throat> this process might be useful. But the the thing is that the data set is relatively small, um, so the <clears throat> the uh, the quadratic processing time doesn't impact us uh, so much. But it could in the future. I could imagine it could in the future because right now we we only get the data for a single airport, but in the future we might get it for dozens or possibly hundreds. In which case, then uh, we would have to do something like this. So this is a this is an additional uh, feature that you pay that we would have to pay extra for. Uh, for now, uh, I selected Zing because it's, it's, it still remain an open source, right? Okay. Uh -huh. All right. 
And um, so are you a transformer? Are you an existing transformer customer? No. Or are you using only uh, the data ops or the data collector? Uh, we only use the um, uh, SDC. So SDC, the data collector. Yeah. yeah. But in the open source? Uh, yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so you have the control of, right? Yeah. Okay. You know what? My boss is calling me, so I have to cut this short. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like, I, this was good. I'll, I'll come to the next one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you right. for your time, William. Yeah. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Hi. Hello. Sorry. Hi. I was just done with the stream sets. Oh, I'm still connected. I have to leave. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So I will close this meeting for today, then. Thank you, Jean-Marc, very uh, well done. Yeah, thank you, it was nice, it was a good presentation. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Thank you, thank you guys, <laughs> have, have a good day.